this whole wall had these over which my niece did and I love it but with everything else that's going on in the room it just was a bit much so I used a tester just to cover them and I found this natural hessian in the storeroom and I think that will work <laughs> to paint over it. I still need to paint that corner. I'm going to do that now and then all the painting is done. I painted the door white and I used a PVA paint. So I'm going to wax it so it doesn't show finger marks. I use any wax. This is just a furniture wax, but you can even use floor wax. I have a cloth that I use with this. You just take your wax, not too much, and you start waxing. And then you leave it for a little bit. So I will do this whole plank, and then I will come back and just polish it with another cloth that I have there. This is what I love about wax, just plain PVA and your hands get stuck and your hands will stay on the paint. But as soon as you wax it, it almost acts like enamel without the problem with the enamel brushes to clean up the words. I found this in one of my sister's other rooms and I'm going to paint that black because I need a shelf for my books. Lenny, I need to paint there. I've painted it and it's time to go and put it up. To put this up so I had those little hooks it's not strong enough this is about six or seven kilos so I'm going to use this claw you hammer it into the wall this is a drywall and there's no studs where I want to hang this up and each claw carries about seven kilos so if I put up three or four I might it might be overkill but it should hold I need something to hold my cotton reels. So I found this in the allotment. I've sanded it down a little bit, cleaned it. Oh, it got dirty again. And I found this paint. So I'm going to just paint it with that. And then I'll do the next step to turn this into something to hold my cottons. <laughs> So I've painted it and now I'm going to cut every second one and bend it out for my cotton. And I'll leave the top one and the bottom row. <laughs> I can't find a side cutter so I'm just using this. And then I use force to cut it. And that gave me a very nice cotton reel holder because I needed one because it was in this drawer. And it was just too much of a mission to get it out every time I needed the color. And I didn't want to spend money on something that's not going to be used because my sister doesn't sew and I'm leaving in a few months. So this was the perfect alternative. Let's see what happens. I hope it holds. Okay, that looks promising. has this Parker Knoll chair. It was made by that company and it was all this dark wood like there but it was a bit chippy so uh, we started sanding it and it came out so nice. There's still a bit of sanding to do but I'm going to wash the fabric. <laughs> And 
now I'm just going to screw it back in place. And this is how you can make a chair look upholstered, even though you didn't. By just covering the arms. So that's nice about these ones, is you could unscrew the arms. This is just a piece of fabric that I pulled over. And I used a few pins in the back, just to hold it in place over there and over there. And if you give enough leeway in there, then even if you sit on it, it still gives you enough moving space. And now and again, you have to just pull it all straight. jewelry and just some odds and ends and some lace drive iron and my little speaker and over there I store my tripod and then on this side is the dressmaker's form that my friend threw out keeps on losing its head which is quite irritating and just some knitting that I hang up here I use this to fill my steamer and then some plants that one was just two leaves and it's grown that much since I got here. This hat rack was on that wall and I have put it up here. And because it's just hats and a pattern and my sock blocker, I've put it on with command strips. I hide my ironing board behind this curtain. It's usually like that. And over here is my rolls of fabric. And then my iron stays there. And I've got this board that I put on my bed with a towel and then I put my ironing board over here. And that's the suitcase I use when I have to move my sewing machine around. And this is where I sew. I keep my plant and <laughs> place my coffee cup over there because when I'm sewing the table wiggles and then my coffee spills. This painting was given to me for my birthday a few years ago and I just love it. I packed it to bring it along. Over there I have my scissors. In here I have some patterns, lace and elastic. That is my wool basket, so all my yarn is in there. This I made and that painting was given to me in 2014 when I did my first fashion show. A friend of mine is an incredible artist and she actually painted that from her child when her daughter was about 13 and she was doing some handwork. I have these two cups for my labels and I'm going to tie them on at the bottom with cable ties. Odd pieces of elastic get stored in that plastic there. Because I use that also. I love using random things. Like this milk jug for my sewing tools. I'm busy making circles to put on bottles of jam. And I'm just keeping them in there because I cut them as I go. Over here is my fabrics. And down there. And then some... Projects I'm busy with is in that box, some more fabrics in the back and some scraps in that box over there. My sewing machine came with my sister when they came back home. They brought it with as hand luggage and this is the Bernina 1008 and my overlocker came also with them and this is the Bernina 700D. Both of these machines, the overlocker as well as the sewing machine are real workhorses. And I really enjoy working with them. And this is my editing corner. And my diary corner and everything else. My computer is down there. I keep my pens and erasers and stuff in there. And highlighters. And I use that little tray table to work on. On this shelf I keep my Bible and my journal. And then over here. <laughs> this is something that my sister and I did. We actually sell them on Amazon. It's called a fed up journal. And you put your date and then your worries and your fears and who annoyed me. And then if revenge was an option, what would it look like? And then a 10 minute rant. And the reason I've made it was that often your brain overthinks and gets stuck on stuff. So the science behind it shows that when you actually write it down, your brain lets it go. And that leaves you space for other things. So, get yourself a fed up journal and write down the things that worry you, even your revenge, 
because then it's like your brain feels it happened and it can move on. And this chair, I found that little cushion in the spare bedroom. Nobody was using it and it looked really tacky. So I just fluffed it out and I washed it. And this is my room. And I love it. I didn't want to spend any money because I'm not going to be here for that long. But I did want a place that I love and where I would feel inspired to work. And it's really done that. I love the room from day one, but it's just become quite a cozy, comfortable space now. And that is my to-do board. And all of that's erasable. And I write the things that I have to do and then just wipe them out as I've done them. Sometimes you need to think a little bit outside of the box. And this outside of the box means I'm going to tie this cup up here. I've put a cable tie between the two and hook the cup on that. And then I tied it properly at the bottom. And that gives me that. So I can just grab a label as I need it. Thank you so much for spending time with me and to come along and see my little room. And that's just something. Make your place work for you, even if it's small. Even if you use things that other people threw out or just random stuff from your garden, make it, make it work for you and think outside of the box. That's so important. And I find that when I do that, I actually have so much fun creating spaces that I love.